Well, I've done myself in. I, uh, I got two new songs that I'm going to try on you this morning, so I'm a bit nervous. Um, I had a lady ask me to sing this first one about a year, a little over a year ago, and I kept forgetting, but it was right before COVID, and it, that just threw me off. I didn't seem like I'd uh, remember to learn anything new, really, but um, the song came across my mind this week, and uh, I've been working on it, so you just... Say a prayer for me, we'll try to get through it, okay? I come to the garden alone While the dew is still I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks. And the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody he gave to me within my heart is real.
This next song I um, literally just purchased on iTunes yesterday afternoon, but I could not get it out of my head. It came across my uh, my phone um, early in the day, and I kept on singing it. I probably listened to it about 50 times yesterday, but I could not get it out of my head because you know, lately I've been thinking so much about heaven, and I just cannot... Just everyday life is just kind of gets me down. I had to work an extra day this week, so I'm a bit tired, but um, the Lord's been with me. He's always there for us, and, you know, it, I just, I cannot stop thinking about that day. Uh, so you, you bear with me, you pray for me, we'll try to get through this, okay? The whole world did not bow when the water turned to wine. And not everyone would worship him when he gave sight to the blind. Out of all the miracles performed, how could anyone deny? No one said he's king of kings when the crowd cried crucify one day every knee shall bow in honor to the king and every tongue confess that he is the lord of everything so the choice is yours to make do it then or do it now one day every knee shall bow every knee shall bow there are those that don't believe and some who still deny that Jesus is the Son of God and His Word is all a lie. Oh, but when the prophecy's been filled and the final trumpet sounds, there is one thing you can count on every need. In honor to the King, and every tongue confess that He is the Lord of everything. So the choice is yours to make. Surrounded 
Lifted by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine When that day comes And I find myself Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I can do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine Yeah I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all that you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Yeah. When all I can do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. I have what you need, but you keep on searching. I've done all the work, but you keep on working. And when you're running on empty. And you can't find a remedy And just come to the well You can spend your whole life Chasing what's missing But that empty inside It just ain't gonna listen When nothing can satisfy And the world leaves you high and dry just come to the well And all who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find what their souls are long for The world will try but it can never feel So leave it all behind 
spoken Just come as you are When your last prayer is spoken When nothing can satisfy And the world leaves you high and dry Just come to the well And all who thirst will thirst no more And all who search will find What their souls are long for The world will try But it can never fail So leave it all And now that you're full of love beyond measures Your joy's gonna flow like a stream in the desert Soon all the world will see the living water that's found in me Cause you come to the well, yeah His only son The brightest star no longer shines Finally this world is mine And then he gathered all his demons near He said we have conquered love with fear is bought with each drop of his blood that falls to the ground mercy abounds as mother mary's tears fall down to see her precious son pay the cost the devil said will use their pride Fill their hearts with vanity Until their differences are all they'll see Well, black and white, rich and poor To justify their holy Mother Mary's tears fall 
ojos Thank you for this singing so far Thank you for Tay getting help And uh, we're going to have a a uh, new young group's gonna be come singing for you, so you be with him as they come right on up. Come on up, guys. For anyone who's ever seen the mountain of their sin just disappear. For anyone who God may carry on. So if I shout, no one shouting. From a heart that's been washed clean. If I run, no one running. From a past that's been redeemed. To the world it might look crazy. There's just no telling what you're gonna do. In that moment, Jesus gets a hold of you. Carry on down my brothers, carry on down my sisters. some good singing here this morning didn't we thank you for God thank you for God being here this morning and I know we say this a lot but there ain't, there ain't no better place to be than being here in the house of God is there Freddie 
No. Uh, Caleb, go ahead and make your way up. Is everyone minding the Lord this morning? All right, let's get behind Caleb as he brings a message. I mean, we got a reason to shout this morning, ain't we? Yeah. Amen. If God never done anything for us but just save us, we still got a reason to shout. And I always think of the scripture when they sing that song of David. When he got the presence of the Lord back, the Bible says that he took off his, his robe, he took off his crown, and he shouted. And Saul's daughter looked out the window and saw him. And the Bible says that she despised him in her heart. And uh, the world looks at us like we're, like we're crazy. And uh, like we ain't got anything this morning. But man, I'm, I'm thankful for what God's done for me. And, and every once in a while, if you see me run, you just let me go right ahead and run. Because I'm running for a reason. Hey, Amen. I'm just not running because I feel good. I'm running because God saved me and from a place called hell. And uh, the world may look at us like we're, like we're fools, but just go ahead and let them think what they want to think. I know what I have in my heart this morning. Amen. Man, I know what I have in my heart, and, uh, and you know what you have in your heart. And uh, I don't know how in the world you got stuck with me three times in a row, but you did. And, uh, and I apologize for that. And, uh, but, uh, but God's helped us so far, and I know that he will help us here this morning too. And... Uh, I uh, appreciate them kids getting up and singing. They've done a wonderful job. And Tate, as always, do a wonderful job. And I appreciate them. Appreciate them this morning. Appreciate, and you know what I appreciate this morning is our Sunday school teachers. I think we have some of the best Sunday school teachers in the country right here in this church. And I appreciate them. And uh, stepping up and helping. And uh, teaching, teaching the Word of God. And that's, it's a powerful, powerful tool. And I'm thankful that we have that here. Wonderful Sunday school teachers I appreciate this morning. If you have your Bibles this morning and you want to turn with me, John chapter number 18 is where I'll be. John chapter number 18, and I won't try not to be long, uh, but to be honest with you, I'm just going to preach until God says I'm done, all right? <laughs> John chapter number 18, I'm going to read just a few verses in John 18. God began to show us something this week here that I feel like where a lot of people's living today, I feel like a lot of people's living right here where Peter was. And I uh, hope this morning this, this message will be a blessing to you like it was to me. Amen. I say this a lot, but it's good when our minds are being spoke to, but I really like it when God speaks to our heart. And uh, God really spoke to my heart on this message. John chapter number 18. I'm going to start in verse number 15. Just going to read a few verses. John 18, 15 says, And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple, that disciple was also known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought, brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, thou, art not, or thou, not, thou also one of the man's disciples, and listen to what he said. Everyone in this church this morning knows that Peter was a follower of Christ. He was a disciple. But look what Peter's answer was to the question. He saith, I am not. And the servants and officers stood there and had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. And that's all I'm going to read this morning. If I could, just, just for a few moments this morning, I want to preach to you on this thought what to do with a cold heart. What to do with a cold heart. I would have to think here that Peter's heart was cold when he done what he done. He knew he'd done three things here wrong. First, he lied. That was the first thing he'd done wrong. And then he denied Christ. That was the second thing he'd done wrong. And then, worst of all, he went and tried to warm himself by a fire with people that was getting ready to crucify Jesus. So we see Peter do three awful things right here. They're very, very bad. He lies, he denies Christ, and then tries to warm himself by, by a fire with people that was getting ready to kill Jesus and crucify Jesus. And, and this morning, I'd have to think the Bible says that it was cold outside. The Bible lets us know that, that it was cold, and that's why Peter went to the fire to warm himself, because it was cold. But I don't think that was the only thing in Scripture that was cold, but in Peter this morning, I see a cold heart. And I see a broken heart when Peter was sitting by that fire uh, trying to warm himself. And can I say there's a lot of people today living right exactly where Peter is, sitting at home today, watching TV, 
sitting on their couch and all because they have a cold heart. And listen, there's a lot of things this morning that can give us a cold heart. People can give us a cold heart. Uh, people talking bad about us can give us a cold heart. Jealousy can give us a cold heart. Pride, anger, guilt, gossip, all those things this morning can give us a cold heart. And necessarily this morning, I know it's easy for us when, th when things go wrong and when life goes wrong, it's easy for us to stand and say, well, the devil's done this, the devil hates me, the devil's after me, he wants to kill me, he wants to destroy me, and all those things are true this morning. The devil does hate us. He is after me, he's after my family, he's after you, and he's after your family. But can I say this morning, just because things go wrong, it's not necessarily all because the devil did it. Here, I didn't see anywhere in Scripture where the devil was standing by Peter and trying to get Peter to deny Christ. Peter got himself a cold heart by doing his own mistake and by doing trying to do things his own way. He was the one that denied Christ. He was the one that lied. And he was the one that walked up to the fire and warmed himself with people that was getting ready to kill Jesus. So can I say this morning that the devil isn't always to blame this morning when we have a cold heart, but sometimes we just need to take a long look in the mirror and say, why do I really have a cold heart? Is it because of people? Is it because the devil? is it because of the own mistakes that I've made this morning. Sometimes we just need to take a long look in the mirror at ourselves and look at us and examine ourselves and realize the reason we're in the mess that we're in isn't because of the devil or isn't because of the friend down the road, but it's because of what decisions I've made and the choices I've made just like Peter did here in this scripture. So here I see a cold heart with Peter when he went and warmed himself by that fire. I see a cold heart. And can I say that we're living in a day where I ain't got to stand up here and tell you this. There's people all over America who has a cold heart. And they let it show. They let it show on social media. Amen. They let it show on social media. They let it show with the life that they live. They let it show with how they act out in public. They let it show with how they talk to people and the dirty jokes and the dirty language. People let it show when they have a cold heart. They do. They let it show. It sticks out like a sore thumb when you have a cold heart. And here in scripture this morning in John, Peter has a cold heart and went looking in all the wrong places to try to get his heart warmed. He went and socialized himself with people that was getting ready to kill Jesus. That's the number one thing I can't get out of my head this morning. He went and sat down by people that was getting ready to go kill Jesus and crucify him and tried to warm himself. Peter went looking in all the wrong places to try to find a warmth in his heart. And can I say that people today with a cold heart is out looking in all the wrong places trying to find a satisfaction, trying to find a joy, trying to find something that can warm their heart. Let me tell you today, you ain't gonna find anything that's gonna warm your heart in a bar. You ain't gonna find anything that's gonna warm your heart on a street corner in Portsmouth, Ohio. You ain't gonna find anything like that that's gonna warm your heart. So what we need to do today is if you want your heart warmed, you need to get Get to where Jesus is. Get to where Jesus is. But here's the problem right here. Here's the problem right here. Nobody knows how to get to where Jesus is. Nobody knows how to get to where he is. And it's simple this morning. You want to know how to get to where Jesus is? Go, go where he promised he would meet us. Go where he promised he would meet us. Where's the first place he promised he would meet us? You know where he said he would meet us? He said he would meet us right here. In his word. He said if you would open up this book and begin to read the pages of this book, he said that he would meet us there. And can I say from experience, I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself and say, and when I open up the pages of this book, I get lost in reading the word of God. Why? Because it's powerful. It doesn't need to be rewritten. It doesn't need to be updated today. It's still just as powerful today as it was the day that it was written. I believe it was Jeremiah that stood and said, I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. I quit. I can't do it no more. But right when he was getting ready to quit, he looked on the inside of his heart and the word was inside of his heart today. You know why I can't quit? Because the word of God is right here on the inside of my heart. Amen. It's right here on the inside of me. Pick it up and read it, but don't just pick it up and read it. Apply it on the inside of you. Apply it on the inside of you. If you have a cold heart, it won't stay cold for too long when you open up the pages of the Bible. It won't stay cold for too long at all. And there's a church I preached at and uh, down in Kentucky, and there was a lady there by the name of Lisa, and when she would open up her mouth and begin to sing, I mean, it sounded like an angel was singing. I mean, she, she sung with such an anointing and such a power, and she would sing that song, I wanna stroll over heaven with you. She would sing that song, and I mean, just make the hair stand up on the back of my neck and my arms, just so anointed. And me and her kinda got close going to that church, and her mom got real sick. Mom got real sick, she got dementia. She was in the hospital, she couldn't, 
She said, Kev, one of the, the saddest days of my life is when I walked in my mama's house and she didn't know who I was. So I've, had, I've spent every Christmas with her. I've spent every Thanksgiving with her. I, I've took, taken care of her through, her through her troubled times. I've been there with her. And so I just said, just broke my heart when I walked in and she didn't know who I was. And said so it just got worse and got worse and got worse. And she said she was getting ready to die. So she was on her deathbed. So I walked in there and she didn't know who I was. She didn't know who my sister was. Didn't know who my kids were. And, and said so we were a close family. It's not like I walked in there with a bunch of strangers and she didn't know who we was. So we was close. We spent as much time together as we could. And said so we was so close. And said so she was laying on that deathbed and I walked in there and she didn't know me, didn't know my sister, didn't know her family. She said, broke my heart knowing that she was getting ready to breathe her last breath without even knowing who I was. Said, it broke my heart. Said, nurses was in there, a doctor was in there and said, for the first time in about three days, said, she woke up and she come to and I'm thinking, oh, she's going to remember me. She, I, she, I, she's, she looks alert. I think she's going to remember me. And sure enough, she said she didn't know who I was. And said, about an hour before she died, she died that day, and she said, about an hour before she died, one of the last words she ever spoke was when she raised up in that hospital bed and she said, he who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, you are my refuge and you are my fortress. You are my God, you are my deliverer and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me. Oh, thank God. From the snare of the fowl, from the noiseless presence, he shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall I trust. She said, Caleb, that lady didn't know who I was. My own mama didn't know who I was. My mommy didn't know who my sister was or who my family was. She said, but her last words on earth was in the precious pages of the book. Yeah. Said for whatever reason, she didn't know me and couldn't remember me, but man, she could remember the word of God. Yeah. Why? Because it was peeled on the inside of her heart. Oh, what we need to do today is open up the word of God and apply it on the inside of us because it'll be with us when we're even breathing our last breath on earth. It may be the only thing we ever remember is these, is these pages of these books. I believe it was, was Burnett's father. So he didn't know much when he was getting ready to pass away, but so he was, it was quoting the word of God when he breathed his last breath. There's something about a saint that has studied and, and lived their life and the pages of this book, it doesn't leave you. It goes with you wherever you are. Yeah. Amen. There ain't no time for a cold heart when you apply the word of God on the inside. Yeah. Let the scriptures come on the inside. It does a work. And it does, a, does something no world or no medicine could ever do. He promised he would meet us in his word, but he also promised he would meet us in prayer. Yeah. Meet us in prayer. Yeah. Man, there is something powerful about a child of God getting down on their knees and not just whispering a prayer. And I'm thankful God hears whispered prayers, but there's something powerful about a child of God that gets down on their knees and wants to see a prayer answered. They get down there and they almost get to the place where they say, God, I'm not leaving this spot. I'm not gonna move. I'm gonna peel myself right here until you show up and show me how you're gonna handle this or how you're gonna fix this. He promised this morning that he would meet us in prayer. Meet us in prayer. Some of the best preaching I ever did in my life is to them oak trees up there behind the house because God would show up and he would come on the scene just me and him all by ourselves. All by herself. One of the fa my favorite of scriptures in the Bible is when David come home and his home was destroyed and his children was gone, his wife was gone, his men wanted to kill him. You know what the Bible says David did? It didn't say that he went and hid in the bushes or he went and hid in the woods or he went and, uh, to another country and hid, but the Bible says that he went and he encouraged himself and the Lord, his God, and he went and got a hold of God and got a hold of heaven and God told him, he said, David, if you pick up your sword and you pick up your shield and you pick up your armor and you go fight, you can and take back everything that the devil stole from you. Can I say this morning that it still works the same way as it did for David? If the devil has stolen something from you, if the devil has taken your joy, if the devil has taken your family, I can tell you, you can tell him and you can find God right here on these altars in prayer today, in prayer. He promised that he would meet us there when we prayed. I believe it was, it was Moses that went up on top of the mountain and all of them all them men down there, all of Moses' men was down there getting all contemporary worshiping idol gods and doing all these idol things. And, and God says, Moses, I'm going to destroy them. I'm done with them. I'm tired, of, I'm tired of their games. I'm tired of their ways, and I'm going to destroy them. What Moses do? He said, oh, God. He said, I think I can talk some sense into them. 
So don't destroy them, don't do that. And what we see, God repented and changed his mind and spared them, all because somebody knew how to pray. I am thankful this morning I go to church with a group of people that know how to pray. That know how to pray. I say, Cape, how in the world do you know you go to a church that knows how to pray? The evidence speaks for the walls behind me. That's how I know I go to a church that knows how to pray. Amen. Amen. Prayer still changes things. Prayer is just as big as God is. Prayer is just as strong as God is strong. Prayer can reach as far as God can reach. If we just get down and do it, he promised he would meet us there in prayer. Amen. But sadly today, I feel like a lot of people's praying a lot of prayers. And they just don't feel like God can do it. Don't feel like God can fix it. So to speak, I'll say this. They feel like, I feel like a lot of people has given up on their prayer. They've given up on their prayer. You say, what do you mean? Well, I, I think of Zacharias. Zacharias went to the temple and he got down and he prayed day after day after day that he wanted a child. Zachariah and Elizabeth. And you know what happened one day when he went to church? The Lord showed up. And I don't think he was expecting the Lord to show up because when he did, the Bible says it scared him. Read it. I'll tell you about it. Let me tell you, I'll just say this and be done. There's a lot of churches today. If the Lord showed up, it'd scare half of them. <laughs> Woo, amen. Telling you the truth. Don't believe me, I'll take you to some. They'd be scared to death if the Lord showed up. But the Lord came and told Zacharias, he said this, he said, Zacharias, thy prayer is heard. And you know what I expect Zacharias to do? I expect Zacharias to get up and jump and shout and run, say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, the Lord showed up, he's gonna answer my prayer. But you know what happened when the Lord showed up and said, Zacharias, your prayer's been heard. We're gonna give you a son, you're gonna name him John. And he's going to be full of the Holy Ghost and he's never to drink alcohol or strong drink. And I mean, he's going to change the world with his preaching. He's going to be a powerful man. You know what Zacharias did? He said, no. I mean, he was there praying for a child and the Lord showed up and said, okay, your prayer's been heard, Zacharias. We're going to give you a child. And Zacharias said, no, I'm an old man now. Old Elizabeth, she ain't what she used to be and I'm an old man. <laughs> I'm an old man. You know what I think was going on there? I think Zacharias was at the prayer, praying a prayer he, did, he gave up on a long time ago. And today I see a lot of people come to the altar and they're praying a prayer that, just like Zacharias, if God did come and answer that prayer, they'd probably want to argue with God and say, oh God, not now. Not now a lot of people has given up on their prayer. Now I know this morning there's a lot of people here who have lost family, got lost husbands, lost wives, lost children, wayward sons and daughters. I know I'm preaching to a bunch of people that has somebody on their mind they would love to see saved. I've come to tell you today, don't give up on your prayer. Don't give up on your prayer. Don't quit, don't stop. There's a, there's a lady, her husband passed away a few years ago and she's got two children that I know pretty well. I know them pretty well. And every time I go preach there, I can tell you exactly what she's gonna say during the prayer quest. She'll say, remember my children. She said, Pray that they, that, they need, that they can see they need the Lord in their life. That's what she says every time, word for word, right there. She says it every single time. And every time I'm there, just about every time I'm there, when, we, when she walks out the door, I'll say, don't you give up. Don't you stop. You keep coming and requesting prayer for them. Don't stop praying. Don't, don't quit and don't give up. Don't give up. Because just like we preached Wednesday night, that ram could be on the other side working its way up. God could be, God could be moving and speaking to them and you not even know it. So don't, don't stop and don't quit. And this morning I've come to tell you to don't stop praying and don't quit and don't give up. Because your prayer could be tomorrow. Your prayer could be answered tomorrow by this time. What if you, what if you stop praying today and God was going to answer that prayer tomorrow? Pray for it every day and don't give up. Don't get up. He promised he would meet us in prayer but this is my favorite one. He also promised that he would meet us at church. Amen. Promised he would meet us at church. He said, where two or three are gathered, what'd he say? I'll be in the midst of it all. In the midst of it all. And you know, I, for a long time, I, didn't, I wasn't really quite sure if I could believe that. Until one Sunday night, I went to a church and preached to two people. And you know what I found out? I found out that God will show up if you're preaching to two, two people, if you're preaching to 200 people, 300 people, 400 people, five people. It doesn't matter how many people's there. As long as there's two or three, he said he'd be right in the middle of it all. I've experienced that today. I've experienced that. He said he'd be right in the middle of it all. And aren't you thankful that he comes like we preached Wednesday night? He meets us here in this place. When these doors open up and we walk in, I feel different as soon as I walk in these doors than I did when I was outside because there's something about being in church. 
Something about being in church. And you talk about one of the hard thing to do is when we was shut down for COVID and, and we wasn't having church and, and Tommy called me one day and he says, do you, do you care to, to you know, do like a devotion or do a message on the phone and we'll put it on there for people to see? You talk about hard. I mean, there ain't nothing there but somebody holding the phone and you're preaching to a phone and, and the church is empty and, it, and it's hard. It's, you know, it's, it was tough. It was tough. Because my two or three was missing. I don't, know, I don't know. My two or three was missing. But when there's two or three of us here, he said that he would fall right in the middle of the place. Be right in the middle of it all. And every single time we get to walk through those back doors, we get to experience that scripture come, come to life. Because he begins to show up. I've looked back this morning and I've seen tears flowing down people's face. Why? Because he's in the midst of us right here in this place. He's in the midst of us. He's here. He shows himself. It's, it's obvious that he's here. It's obvious that he shows up. I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They got thrown in a fiery furnace. And see, that king messed up. He should have picked them up one at a time and threw them in the fire. That's what he should have done. But he picked up all three of them at the same time. And I'd have to say that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got together and said, guys, we may die right here or we may live forever. I said, I don't know what's going to happen. So let's just agree right here that God's got us. That he's in the midst of us. And he made the mistake by picking up all three of them. The Bible says where two or three are gathered and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's three. I'm not real smart, but that's three guys right there. And they all agreed that no matter what happens, they'll die right there. And he picked them all up and threw them in the fire. And you all know the story. The king spoke up and said, did you not throw three men in the fire? And he said, yeah, we did. He said, but there's four in there walking around and the fourth one looks like the son of God. Yeah. King made the mistake of picking them up all three at the same time because they all agreed together. And he was right in the midst of it all. Even on what was supposed to be one of the darkest days of their life, being thrown in that fire, he was right in the middle of it all. The key to a cold heart is going where he promises he would meet us. And his word, and prayer, and church, and I like this one right here too, he promised he would meet us in worship. In worship. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd have to think that when the trees and the leaves are shaking back and forth, they're just lifting up praises to God. When the animals holler and they scream, I'd have to think they're praising God. Praising God. When the grass blows through the field, I'd have to think that grass is just lifting off praise to God. Everything that has breath, that's why we're here. That's why God made man was to worship Him. That's the main thing today. That's the main thing is to worship Him. We need to make sure that we're praising him every, every, chance, that, every chance that we get. He, he promised that he would meet us down here on this earth. He would meet us down here. And I've experienced it, and you've experienced him meeting us down here. But you know what's going to happen? We've sung about it this morning. There's going to be a day where I'm going to breathe my last breath. And he's going to meet down here with me for the last time. And I'm going to go meet up there with him when I breathe my last breath. He's paid me a lot of visits down here since I've been alive. And then one day I'm going to go visit him and I'm just going to stay up there. I'm just going to stay up there. We've sung about heaven. We've sung about that place. I tell you, more, the more older I get, the more homesick I get for that place. That's why I do what I do. That's, that's why I'm here because that's why I want to make heaven my home more than anything else, above anything else. I taught this morning and I told him this. I said, one day you're going to die and there's going to be a tombstone. I said, your name's going to be on there. The day you was born is going to be on there and there's going to be a dash. And that dash is going to represent your life. And it's going to represent your life. It's going to represent something. And I got to thinking about, about James Ray this past week. Don't know why. I just had him on my mind this week. And think about him all from time to time. Think about Big John all the time. Ron all the time. And Jim, Allen. I think about all of them. All the time. I do. I think about them more times than I probably should. I think about them all the time. Think about if they were still here, what they would say. I remember what they'd all say to me after I'd pray. I remember all those things they would, they would do. And I got about thinking about when James Ray, he had his viewing here, and there was probably a thousand people come back night to that viewing. He, I guarantee you, if he could have said something, he could have said, you wouldn't see him here on a normal Wednesday night, would you? And that's something he would have said. That's something he would have said. If he could have said one thing, one last thing, that's what he would have said. That's the truth. 
No joke, there was probably a thousand people or more come that night to his viewing. And that's what he would have said. And you know I'm telling you the truth. But I think about James Rand, he what, had a seventh grade education? Quit school and went to go help his family work. But you want to know there was doctors that walked through them doors. There was lawyers that walked through them doors. And they would say, this man right here influenced me. He was an impact in my life. James Ray wasn't a man that went to college, had a degree or anything like that. But yet he was somebody that impacted men that did have degrees. <laughs> he didn't live that life with a cold heart. James Ray went where he promised he would meet him. And that's why James Ray was always the same. That's why I don't, I don't know if the man ever had a cold heart. If he did, I didn't know about it. He was on fire all the time. It didn't matter seven days a week, 24 hours a day, man, he was the same. <laughs> he was the same. You all know his truth. He was the same. We ain't got, here's the thing this morning, we ain't got time to walk around with a cold heart. There is a world out there that is hurting, it's dark, and it gets darker by the day. And if us, the church, walks around with a cold heart, why in the world would they want anything we got right here this morning? They wouldn't want any of that. We need to walk around with a fire on the inside of us. I'm not saying every day you're gonna wake up and the power of God's gonna be there and you're gonna feel like running and shouting every day. That's not what I'm saying. You're gonna have dark days and sad days, but that's when you need to realize, man, I'm getting kind of cold. I need to go where he promised he'd meet me and open up the word of God, get down on your knees. Meet him there, meet him there. God's powerful and he can give us that power. I'm nothing by myself, but man, with him, I feel like I can do just about anything. There was a video, I'll close with this and I'll be done. It's 12 o'clock. I'll tell you this, this little story. and I, I, I love that it was a video I seen and it was a video of a little baby bear and it was running, you know, in the wilderness and it was running and eating and playing and about that time, a big old cougar run up to this little bear and it started running. That little bear started running with everything that it had. And that cougar was thinking, you know, that's gonna be my lunch. That little baby bear is gonna be my lunch. And the whole video, it shows this bear, this little baby bear running, trying its best to get away from this cougar. It's on the river floating. It jumps up on a log. I mean, it's doing everything that it can. I mean, it was near death a couple times just trying to get away from this cougar. And finally, this little baby bear comes up to a cliff and it didn't have nowhere to go. It was, it was nothing, nothing. It wasn't a cliff. It was a, it was a river. And he didn't have nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. If he would have swam across the river, he would drown. So he was just stuck right there. Stuck. And about that time, that cougar comes up, and I'm thinking to myself, oh no, it's all over for this little bear. And if it starts eating that little bear, I'm turning this video off. That's cruel. I won't watch it. Uh, but he's, he's up against this river, and the cougar comes up, and about that time, that little bear does the only thing it knew to do. It stood up on its back legs, and it began to growl and to holler at that cougar. And that cougar didn't phase it a bit. It just kept right on walking, thinking, that don't scare me a bit. And about that time, that little bear, one last time, jumped up on his hind legs and it ro roared as hard as it could. Sounded like just a little kitten. And about that time, the cougar got scared and it backed up and it backed up and it backed up and it took off running. And I thought to myself, what in the world? And about that time, the camera come around to where you could see that little baby bear and there was mama bear standing right behind him, <laughs> beating its chest. And the cougar runs off and got scared. You know, this morning, how many times has the devil got us to a place? How many times the devil got us to a place where we didn't have nowhere to go? We couldn't do anything. We were stuck right there. And we would try our best to fight the devil on our own. And the devil just kept right on fighting until finally we got down on our knees and began to call out to one that was mightier than we are, mightier than the devil is. And about that time, the devil wasn't nowhere to be found because the devil stood behind us, or God stood behind us. God stood behind us and had our back. We really thought we were something fighting off the devil, but what we don't realize is God's right behind us. He's right behind us fighting on our behalf this morning, fighting on our behalf. This morning, if you've got a cold heart, I've told, you this, I've told you the key to warm your heart this morning. I've given you the key. I've given you the tools. All you've got to do, it's simple this morning. Just go where he promised he would meet us. He can meet us right here. Meet us right here in this place. I'm thankful for him this morning and I'm thankful that when we have a cold heart, he'll show up and he can warm our hearts. I believe it was the men that went out, they was on Emmaus Road and they heard the preaching of God's word and the Bible says that their hearts burned within them when they heard the word. He can burn our hearts up this morning and give us a fire like we've never experienced before. We ain't got time today to walk around with a cold heart and a bitter heart. Let God warm it today.
Scott, if you will come with the song. Stand to your two feet this morning. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed all over the church this morning. Always want to give the opportunity. If you have a need this morning, if you're cold, if your heart's cold, there ain't no reason to walk out them doors with your heart cold. God can meet us here this morning. He can show up for us. Be there for us. He can warm our heart like nothing else can warm it today. As Scotty sings, you just bow your head and close your eyes. You know what you stand in need of. You know your heart. I ain't going to embarrass nobody or come back to anybody. It's up to you today. It's up to you.